So this is part two of my guide on how to build the retro gaming pine coffee table that I designed a couple of months ago. Now, not all my parts have arrived yet, but if you're watching this in the future, I'm sure all my parts have been done. I've probably finished the table by now, but if not, then we are just basically just waiting on the parts to come in. My table's arrived, but the rest of the parts haven't come yet, so there's no point because I'm going to be making cuts in that table and I need those parts to do that. But, like I said at the end of last video, the part one, is that we still need a few different parts to actually put this thing together. Now one of the most complex parts about this is the holding the screen in place basically. I pondered over this very simple design for many, many, well, it could have been a few weeks actually, I can't quite remember, but it was a long time. I do remember sitting in the hardware store just looking at these components and thinking, just thinking how, in my head how to actually do this. And I came up, but basically what this is, it's just a photo frame. That's all it is really. I came up with a photo frame, fantastic. But anyway, the way I built what you can see here on camera is basically a sort of a, a frame design. And the aim of this is just to hold the screen in place. This top layer here, as you can see, is going to stick to the underside of the actual coffee table top and this lip here is where the screen will be sat so the corner of the screen will be in here and the edge of the screen will be running along here obviously this is just a really small sample size of what i had left over it gives you an idea of what we're going to be building here now we do we do need um, two pieces of pine to actually do this and this pine should be available in your local hardware store. If you're in the UK, B&Q stock this, as well as that Wix and Homebase also stock it. I'm not sure what the equivalent would be in the USA or Europe or other parts of the world. I'm not entirely sure. But if you ever have a large hardware store local to you, there's a damn good chance they're going to stock these two pieces of wood. Not these two pieces. These two pieces, okay? So these are two pieces glued together, and I'm going to get on to showing you how to glue it together just in a second. But basically, this piece here on the bottom is called fresh, fresh wood pine, fresh, fresh hold pine, sorry, fresh hold. I'll spell that out for you T H R E S H O L D, fresh hold pine. And it measures 13 millimeters by 23 millimeters by 2400 millimeters which translates to 2.4 meters and this is really you know generic sort of um, pine um, like strips of pine that maybe a joiner would use maybe putting them in the flooring down skirting boards that sort of things just to make things flush and yet I did sit there for quite a while just pondering how I could actually build this thing and I came up with taking this attaching it to this on the top and basically building what we have here now the piece of wood that is on the is glued onto the top here is called pine strip wood it's really really generic stuff and you should be able to get it locally to you you should be able to and yeah this measures 10.5 millimeters by 11 millimeters and basically they're just glued together now the reason we need two is because unfortunately this threshold pine isn't quite deep enough on top which is a shame I'm sure if you've got some lumber yard cuss, you could probably have this custom made and just have it all made in one strip. I don't have that privilege, unfortunately. So I've had to glue these together to actually make this deep enough. Now it's deep enough so the screen can fit in it because it wasn't deep enough. So that's about the thickness of my screen. Actually, it's not, but it's about the same. It's a, it's a couple of millimeters thicker than my screen. And I'll get on to how to actually make it fit nice and tight later on in the series. But yeah, so we just need that depth for the screen basically. And these two are going to be glued together with wood glue. We're going to need some um, clamps as well to hold it together. And this join here is unbelievably strong because I've just used some half decent wood glue. And yeah, that's probably a stronger connection to each other than the actual strength of the wood itself. This is very, very strong and it holds it to the top of your, top of your table very, very sturdy. It's, as far as I can tell, it's the best solution that I could come up with to hold the screen in place not only to hold it in place but to look good as well you don't just, you don't want big strips of wood holding everything in place because it just looks awful I've done that in the past and I don't recommend it especially since the screen on this thing is going to be in the upright position sometimes you're going to be able to see it 
So yeah, as well as that later on when we finally actually build the actual frame because I'm not going to do that in this video I'm just going to show you actually gluing it together because I'm not quite ready yet like I said I don't have all parts yet but you're going to need a mitre box a mitre box is basically just to make mitre cuts basically and we're going to need 45 degree angles to actually cut the actual frame out so if you don't have a mitre box go out and get one the dirt cheap if you've got a circular saw fantastic or if you're just amazing with cutting wood, then you don't need this explained to you really. But yeah, we're going to be creating a frame from these pieces of uh, pine strip strip wood that we're going to make now. So anyway, let's move over now. Let's glue this thing together. Right, so I'm going to glue this onto the top of here. And I'm going to use some clamps to hold it in place and some half decent wood glue by Evo stick. So I'm going to just put, apply a little bit of glue just along the top here. And then I'm going to hold it in place. Just take a few hours for it to dry. But once it's dry, it's rock solid. Just make sure that your edge is away from here and it's flush against the side of here. Okay? That just means the screen has something nice and flat to sit against. So let's do that now. So just a little bit more about the actual screen size and sort of how this works. So the reason I put on that extra bit of pine strip wood was because it wasn't quite deep enough. Now here's my screen here, it's actually arrived. And as we see, hopefully this has been picked up on camera, this is going to sit a bit like that. Well, no it won't. It'll sit like that. Now at the moment it's not quite thick enough this piece here, this piece. And this is gonna sit like that, but I'm going to remove this plastic casing. Now the reason I'm removing it is because of this little gap here. Now hopefully that's been picked up on camera. There's these little, this gap around the screen, as you can see. Now, it just makes it sink further into the table and I don't want that, as well as that. It just makes the whole thing really thick and clumpy. It's not unsafe to remove the casing on your screen. It just makes, uh, because it's earthed anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and it just makes things a little bit easier, I think. Just be careful when removing the casing at all. But you might have a really, really thin screen. I know there is some really thin PC screens out there at the moment. And it might be perfectly fine not to add, add an extension on top of it. It really depends on which screen you're going for. But for me, once I've removed that plastic casing, then you know it's perfectly just about right for this now as well as that i removed the casing because it makes the whole build a lot easier in the next video we're probably going to be cutting the screen out of the actual tabletop and we need a template and the only template that's going to come in useful is the actual template or the kind of the casing for this um for the screen itself because you see when we remove i'll show you in the next video of course when we remove the actual screen out from the casing, there's a little gap around it, and we don't want that gap showing. So we need to use this. So we're going to use the inside of this as our template onto our tabletop. So this comes in really useful. That's another reason why I dismantled the screen. So yeah, measure how deep your screen is. And you may be able to get away with either not using it or using maybe a thinner top, pine top. Once sat on top of your threshold pine, remember how we went through it all? You might be able to get thinner. So measure how thick the side of your screen is. Take it apart and then measure how thick it is on the corners. It should be nice and flat, hopefully, if you choose a decent screen. Measure it 
how thick it is and then that gives you an idea of your depth that you need for this part here okay hopefully that makes sense and if it doesn't that's absolutely fine you know I don't expect you guys to fully understand it it took me quite a while to figure that basic thing out you know um, but that's just the way it is ask me in the comment section below and I'll do my best to help you and guide you in the best way possible um, but really when it boils down to it it is pretty straightforward so just have a think about it and yeah um, do let me know if you are struggling or not. Anyway, thanks again for watching and uh, hopefully part three won't be too long in um, to come. Uh, I, I know I'm on a part pretty much here now. I just need those few more parts so I can actually cut the actual holes out in the table before I put it together. And I do need those here before I do that. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to click that notification bell as well because it will notify you of all the future videos especially to do with this anyway thanks we'll see you very soon